Today with Joseph Prince. When you feel guilty, you are saying, I must be punished. Only then I can be relieved from this guilt. But the gospel is that, look at Jesus. There is your punishment. There is your punishment. You must let your conscience look at the cross and say, yes, I did wrong, but there's my punishment. Can I have a good amen? Someone was condemned in your place. Look to that and let your heart be at rest. Your conscience is perched. Amen? The word boldness in the Bible in the New Testament, when it says we have boldness to come to God's presence, we have boldness to come to Him. The word boldness is actually the, the, literally the Greek word free speech. Free speaking. Literally, free speaking. In other words, you don't have to come to Him with flowery phrases. You don't have to come to Him with, with biblical, you know, uh, language. Free speaking means you can come to Him and say, Lord, I feel lousy today. Lord Jesus, I just don't like what that person did just now. Lord, I don't feel like forgiving my husband. But I know I have to, Lord, but right now I don't feel like. He's the only one you can say that to. And you know what? You sense His compassion. The more free you are, the more honest you are in your conversation, the more you take a walk with Him somewhere in a garden or, or somewhere shopping, if you ladies want to go shopping. Amen? You can talk to Him all the time that you are doing your shopping. Open up your heart. Tell Him your worries. Tell Him your cares. You don't even have to tell Him to do something about it. Just tell Him. That's friendship time. That's free speech. And you are in the presence of the Holy of, uh, 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 of the Lord, in the Holy of Holies, walking in the mall. My goodness. That is something that even in the Old Testament, the high priest, only guest, and only the high priest, no one else, gets to go in but only once a year. And that with trepidation. It was an old and dying way. Chances are, if he's not well prepared, he will die. But now, it is a new and living way. And one day, the Lord said to me, you know why it's a living way? I look it up. New there means freshly slain, as if Jesus just died yesterday. Freshly slain. New there means just died, as if he just died. Amen? But living way, the word there is actually living means every time you come, you come alive. Every time you come, if you're sick, you come alive. The more you come to Jesus, the more alive you become. The more you come to Jesus, the healthier you end up. The more you come to Jesus, everything about you comes alive. Even the dead spots in your brain right now, you cannot comprehend what I'm saying. It will all come alive. Have you ever felt after you leave church, you are stronger? Not just, not just physically, I'm talking about stronger in your mind, in your spirit, in your soul. Come on church, give Him the praise and the glory. Hallelujah. It's a new and living way. So the Bible says, you know all things. And this know is uh, on the inside, all right? It is, it is beyond our brain, but our reasoning, our logical uh, 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 analysis of a situation, of a person. It is something that you have an inward knowing, the Bible says. And the verse before this says, this Antichrist, they went out from us because they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. That explains and answers the question, Pastor Prince, the people who leave church and then they don't come back. Amen? Uh, what about them? Are they still safe? Very simple. Read that verse. The verse before this. It tells you that in the first place, they were not of us. Now, there are those who are safe and left. And then they join another church. If they're truly safe, they will always come back somewhere to the house of God. Amen? But if they don't come back, they were never safe in the first place. Very simple. They were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. That's in verse uh, 19. Then it says, you have an anointing from the Holy One. You know all things, including people that are not really the real deal. They are trying to replace Christ. They want you to look to them. Amen? Like for example, anointing oil. They are teaching about anointing oil, but you know how to do it? I got to be the one to lay hands on it. If I don't lay hands on it, you must buy all the olive bottles, right? From me. Because specially prayed by me. And you all know I'm anointed. So they, they built this anointing, and it's true, I'm anointed. Many of these people who are called by God in the fivefold ministry, not everyone is called to the fivefold ministry, and, and, and they are anointed, there's a special anointing there, yes. Amen? But to say that they are all the only ones who can lead you in communion, they are the only ones who can, who can uh, 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 pray over the oil, and the oil is anointed. Okay, I'm, I'm going to use a, a strong word, but I realize the Lord restrained me, the anointing within. I want to talk about something about, about cow dung, but... The Lord restrained me. It wasn't dung. It was something stronger, but it is purely nonsense. All right? It is simply untrue. 
It is defecation matter. All right? To say that you are the only anointed one, you are the only one people can... All right, so be very careful about this kind of thing. And that's why when we had our anointing oil day to pray for your anointing oil, we, we told you any, any bottle will do. All right? Any oil will do. My preference is olive oil, but you know, any oil will do. Amen? You're the oil you use for your hair. All right? Also can. You got no oil, use that one. Amen? No problem. Remember the time when we were at the, the rock back then? Amen? We met the rock and, and below uh, the, the mall, Kafu, they ran out of olive oil. And they, they, they asked our people, what's going on? How about making that happen again? Yeah? <laughs> to all the shops around here, amen? Do you often find yourself worried and troubled in an increasingly chaotic world? If that's you, we want to send you Joseph's hope-giving book, Thoughts for Let Go Living, for your gift of any amount to the ministry today, along with a CD sermon where Joseph shares more on how to find security in times of anxiety. When you request a resource from Joseph Prince Ministries, your gift goes back into reaching even more people who need to hear the message of grace. Offer available to U.S. and Canada residents only. So there is a place, but Pastor Prince, uh, this oil and all that, uh, does it really matter? It, you know, the anointing will lead you. Now, anointing is amazing. You know when anointing comes on your body, when someone smears anointing on you, all right, for exercise therapy or whatever, uh, 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 massage, you know, uh, physiotherapy, they put oil, and you can sense that there is a, a, a warmth. You can feel it. You can feel a warmth. And many of times as you're listening to me preach, you feel a warmth come to your heart. That's the anointing. You experience the anointing. It can be felt. Don't always look for feelings, but God gave us feelings. So you, it can be felt. You can have a good amen. And, and this anointing will teach us all things. And many a times you know a teaching. Many of you understand grace, not because Pastor Prince, okay, let me put it this way. Um, let me say it in a, in, a, in a better way. You understand with your mind because Pastor Prince taught it. But many a times, long before you heard me elucidate it, you actually know it. And when you hear wrong teaching, the Holy Spirit on the inside gives you the absence of that peace. And that, you know, you're just not, something is not right about this teaching. So when I preach it and you sat in my teaching or you read my book, your insight was saying, this is it. This is it. This is it. I didn't give you the this is it. That is the anointing within. And that's how you can tell false teachers from the real teachers. Amen. The best witness with your spirit. Argument, people can say, Pastor Prince is a false teacher, that person is a false teacher, grace teaching is a false I mean, uh, grace teaching, all that. They can attack your mind and, 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 and you know, the social media is full of it. People of minds attacking people of minds, attacking people of minds, answered by, reply by people of minds. You cannot answer people of minds with, with logical questions because one logical answer you have, they have 10,000 logical questions. Amen? Jesus does not deal with, you know, that's why they don't live in the realm of the miraculous. They don't live in the realm of the supernatural. They don't see things happen because they live in the realm of the brain. Amen. But look at Jesus. Why miracles happen in His ministry? Number one, even though He is divine, in a sense, He didn't use His deity when He lived as a man. He's 100% man. He came to be 100% human. Except no sin. No sin in His nature. He was born, the Bible says, that holy thing, that holy thing that should be born of thee, he was conceived in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Now, but he had to be baptized by the Holy Spirit, anointed by the Holy Spirit when he was about 30 years old at the river of Jordan, coming up, and the Holy Spirit came on him. No record that he did miracles before that. I know there are some uh, apocryphal stories of Jesus as a boy. He, he saw a, a, a bird struggling on the floor. His friend saw him pick up the bird, touch the bird's legs, and the bird flew off. You know, that kind of story. It's all apocryphal. The Bible says this is the first miracle that Jesus did, turning water into wine. He only, only when he was baptized with the Holy Spirit, miracles started flowing in his life. The supernatural. Amen. Because he is the pattern man. He's also the man who is uh, going to pattern himself for us to follow after. So if Jesus, the Son of God, has to be anointed by the Holy Spirit, how much more you and I? Amen. Can I have a good amen? 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 So if you listen in the realm of logic, why are people not receiving their healing? Why are people are not receiving their breakthrough? Because they, they are too strong in their heads. Too strong in their heads. Let me show you an example of, of what I'm trying to say in all this. In uh, Luke 5, please. 
It says in Luke 5, when Jesus, okay, the story is the man was, the man who was lame was being lowered. Remember his friends, four friends? Sometimes, many of us don't want to be the guy lying in the, in the mat, right? We want to be the guy who carry. But sometimes, thank God for the faith of a few close friends. They carry us through with their prayer, their love. And then they lowered, where Jesus was meeting, the place was packed, the Bible says. The place was jam-packed. Why? Because he just cleansed a leper. Remember that? So all the doctors of the law and the Pharisees from Jerusalem came over right here. And you can see this in Capernaum, which is actually Peter's house. Peter's house roof got broken. And uh, you know, it's, it is something that uh, only someone who loves their friend that much will do it and desperate to have the friend come to Jesus. So they lowered the man down as Jesus was teaching. The Pharisees were all watching. And Jesus saw the man as he was lowered down. The Bible says when Jesus saw that, Jesus saw that, not their reasoning, not their logic, their faith. He said to the man, sick, man, your sins are forgiven you. Obviously, why he was sick and all that, not every uh, sickness is caused by sin. But many, many people, and again, by the way, you know, strictly speaking, all sickness comes from sin because one sin, Adam's sin. If there was no, if Adam never sinned, there'll be no sickness. But I, what I'm trying to say is that doesn't mean someone is sick, that means that, that person has sinned. That's what I'm referring to. Never say that of anyone. Like Jesus told his disciples when they found a man who was born blind, did this man sin? They asked Jesus. Or his parents sin? Jesus says, neither. But that the works of God should be made manifest. The question is always, don't, don't get involved in all this stupid logic. But the problem exists for me to meet it. There's a problem, meet it. Amen? So, Jesus told the man, your sins are forgiven you. Obviously, he was in a position where he was feeling guilty about something and that guilt and that condemnation, which I always say condemnation kills, has gotten this man flat on his back with some, some sickness. Many of times, doctors even today say that when you don't forgive yourself and, and you, are, you hate yourself, you know, and a lot of people don't even, even realize they're doing this to themselves. Your body fights against your own body. It's called psychosomatic. That means your mind is in guilt, your soma, your body, start fighting. Uh, they have psychosomatic illnesses, sicknesses, which means they say that uh, uh, your own body is fighting against itself. There is, there is a civil war going on, on the inside. Your body is trying to obey the mind that, that feels guilty and the heart that feels guilty and you want punishment. No, you say, Pastor Prince, I don't want punishment. No, when you feel guilty, you are saying, I must be punished. Only then I can be relieved from this guilt. But the gospel is that, look at Jesus. There is your punishment. There is your punishment. You must let your conscience look at the cross and say, yes, I did wrong, but there's my punishment. Some of you, you feel so angry at the things that you did last time. You feel like kicking yourself and all that. Stop that. You feel like cutting yourself. Stop that. You feel like killing yourself. Stop that. Because someone was condemned in your place. Look to that and let your heart be at rest. Your conscience is perched. Amen? True humility is not to punish yourself. That's pride. You can't punish yourself well enough. Not to the extent also. Huh? With all due respect, you can't even punish yourself that well enough. So true humility is to accept Jesus' punishment on the cross as yours. And to say, Lord, thank you. Amen. That's true punishment. That is accepting your punishment in a way that Jesus' punishment was your punishment. Amen? And that will cause you to fall in love with the Lord Jesus, I'm telling you. Amen? And it, you, will, you will have Him as your best friend. Not just your Lord, your God, but your best friend. So, back to this. This man was sick. Jesus says, your sins are forgiven you before He healed him. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason. Dia logizomai, from the word where our English word comes from, logic, logizomai. They were logizomaiing, logic. They heard Jesus say that and they began to reason saying, who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? They are right. They are right, right? Yeah. Ask yourself, who can forgive sins but God alone? So who is this man? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, aha, this word perceived is an inward faculty. It is a faculty of your spirit. It is where the Holy Spirit dwells. 
People reason, you perceive. When the law of reasoning is going on, stop and ask yourself, God, Lord, what, what are you saying, Lord, about this whole thing? Sense, sense. Sometimes there's a lot of argument, it's just a smoke screen. Somebody is trying to get out of something. I have that come to me before. I've had, you know, things that say, the Lord saying, this is not the thing that they're arguing about. There's something deeper, something that is causing this. Your husband comes back and, and, and picks a quarrel with you. And you, okay, stop, you know, he looks this, or he's trying to find for me. He's going to bring up my mother again. He's going to do this. And he's talking about my, my cooking again. You know, your mind is reasoning. Your mind is reasoning. Even before your husband says, your mind is reasoning. Your mind is reasoning. You know? And then before you know it, you are angry with him. Before he can say anything, you are angry. And, he, and he, when he says something, bang, you know, the whole thing starts. But then if you listen for a while, and the Lord's saying, something really bad happened at work today. He's fearful. He is afraid that he might be the next one. Or something like that. You just sense, you might not know the whole thing, but you just sense something happen. Did something happen at work, dear? A soft answer turns away wrath. Not easy. Because you are going, your whole mind, you are, you are raised to be a logical person. You look at all the comments of anything that happened. Got A and B one. For sure. Don't waste your time. Your time is too precious to look at other people's logizomai. Logizomai, the logizomai, logizomai, logizomai. Ask yourself on the inside. You know, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that, I don't like this. And another person, end up, they end up quarreling, right? Logizomai never brings peace. Never say, well, you know, guys, let's get together and, you know, and uh, celebrate. Guys, hey, let's get together. No, it always gets the strife. Become profanity, wow, vulgarity, come on. So Jesus perceived. Perceived is, he perceived their thoughts. They were reasoning not openly, you know, they were reasoning in their minds, you know, but he perceived their thoughts. All right, this is spirit realm. He answered and said to them, Why are you logizomai in your hearts? Why are you reasoning in your hearts? All right, which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven or rise up and walk, but that you may know the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He turned to the man who was sick. Rise up, take up your bed, and walk. And the dude walked, man. Next verse. Amen. Immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed and glorified God, were filled with fear. We have seen strange things today. Here I am. I'm telling you people, if you are logic, 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 there is no result, no supernatural uh, 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 power release. But when you are in the spirit realm, you speak, power is released. Most arguments start with logic. So what you're saying, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. Just now you said this. And I said this. After that, you said this. Actually, the person forgot, right? And deep down in your heart, you realize, actually, what are we arguing about, you know? But you don't want, because stay in the, in, stay in the logical realm. It's better. But you turn back to the Spirit. The Spirit says, okay, let go. Ten years from now, you'll forget about all this, right? It's not important in the... In the course of your life, this will just be a little, you know, little dot that'll be forgotten. Some things in training your children, in correcting them, in scolding them, doesn't really matter. In some moments, whether you do that or not, the Lord doesn't even care. Amen. The, 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 the Lord says nothing. But there are times the Lord says, no, no, don't let that go. And then you let that go, you don't have the peace. Why? You didn't follow the anointing. You should correct when you, you're supposed to. Then you feel the peace. But sometimes you correct at the wrong time when the, when the peace isn't there. Now you've got no peace. You feel guilty for correcting. All right? Grace people need to hear this. Grace people are just indulgent. They are, their child can do no wrong. One of the things I told those who are helping Watch over Justin. Some time ago was, when he's wrong, you got to tell me. Don't let him go by with murder. Just because he's my son. He's rude, you must let me know. Yeah. There's always a special room to bring him. <laughs> Many a times nowadays, no need really. You start running to me, hug me and saying sorry, sorry. That fast. 
just do it right the first time. You have him always remembering. When a child is correct, uh, properly corrected, okay, they become more loving to you. They end up honoring you. You don't, you don't, def you know, if, if you, if someone doesn't correct you when you are younger, then you know, one day the institution will do it, but without love. They just go by the law. Parents do it with love. I don't know why I'm saying this, okay? I'm just following the Spirit. Amen. Praise God. And they were all amazed. And they, so Jesus had the miracle where the Pharisee and thought and thought and thought, but they can do nothing about the situation. Jesus perceived. They reason. That's why Jesus won. They don't have results. Jesus had results. Amen. Perceive. Someone can say a lot of things to you, present to you a good presentation, but listen to your spirit. Listen to your heart. Do, are, are you... You know, are you having this peace to invest, to do that? And they will argue based on reasoning. They will open up, you know, things to show you statistics and all that. Now this really, really nice. They will show augmented reality. <laughs> Amen. The stats and all that. But you got to ask yourself, you know, some people might not like me anymore, but you know what? If you listen to what I'm saying, even you're a salesperson, okay, you will succeed. You will succeed because there was supernatural power attending to your way. Amen. Amen. What I'm trying to say is this. There are things a lot of people are selling which are good things, right? But there are things that you can't afford at this time or should not be spent investing. And there are things you should invest in. I would think insurance is one of them. Amen? Your life insurance or whatever. There are some things, it's wisdom, but some things, just a matter of like, you know, we just spend, spend. Look at Jesus. He's generous. Five loaves, two fish. He fed them until the Bible says he gave them, the, or he gave his disciples to pass to them, the 5,000 men who were hungry. They ate until they were full. They ate until they were full. As, and, and they gave as much as the people would. Not as, as God would. They gave as much as they would. John's Gospel talks about it. They gave, they gave, they gave the fish, they gave the bread to all the people as much as they would. Until they say, oh, enough, enough, enough. Then the supply stopped. Would you call that generosity? That Jesus is a generous God? A benevolent God? But watch this, watch this. You know what he said? Gather all the fragments that remain. Let nothing be wasted. Ah. Uh. Look at this amazing man. Yes, generous, but no wastage. Honoring God's creation. That is not wasted. God supply, God supply everything. Like, lift, blast everything on, aircon on, you know, light. How, I mean, why you argue? God supply what? Don't worry. Pastor Prince say, yeah, the ladder rain. <laughs> Brother, if you don't follow God's leading, this year, there'll be a letter pain. Somewhere down the road. Uh, somewhere down the road. Somewhere down the road. Jesus didn't believe in that. You know, I, I love this. Uh, there's one of the five offerings that I've taught before, um, a number, many years ago now. And one of the five offerings has no blood. All the other four has blood. And all depict the, the Lord Jesus and His death on the cross, except for this one. It's called the grain offering. Leviticus 2. When anyone offers a grain offering to the Lord, his offering shall be of fine flour. No blood. It's grain. We're talking about the blessing on the grain. Grain. Now, it's actually grain. Fine flour. Say fine flour. Not just flour. Fine flour. Fine flour. When you touch fine flour, it's so soft. You can hardly feel it. You press it, right? There's nothing cost. Not one cost of grain. Uh, uh, not, no one, no, not even a, a grain that's cost. Not, you can't feel any unevenness. It's so soft. You touch it, it's like fine flour. You know, they sift through and they sift through and they sift through and it's fine flour. Because it's a picture of Jesus Christ. When they offer the lamb on the altar, what you don't see is also they offer the, uh, uh, the like the mazza bread. It comes from fine flour. Okay? But the ingredients are here. Fine flour. And he shall pour oil on it. Aha! Is Jesus right? The person of Jesus mentioned here. He's fine flour. Now, fine flour. 
anointing oil on him. That's Jesus, anointed by the Holy Spirit. I just told you just now, his benevolence does not cancel out his good stewardship over the resources that remain. There's no wastage. Even before we were created, the Father loved the Son. I was daily His delight. And yet, I cannot understand how it pleased the Father to crush His Son. So I asked the Lord for this many years ago. And then one day, I remember, uh, I think it was during the Christmas time, and we were going for some, like many of you, last minute Christmas shopping. And at the time, Jessica was about three years old. And uh, we parked our car at a car park somewhere. And then we went to the mall, quite a distance away. On the way back, all right, there was a lot to carry. Wendy was carrying in her hands and uh, some, some, some bags, and I was carrying both hands, and Jessica got tired. So I, of course, the strong father would want to carry the daughter, right? And she, she wants to sleep. So I, I pick her up, my hands full, and almost immediately, she fell asleep on my shoulder. I could hear her heavy breathing. And then I realized where I parked my car was really far away. Oh my goodness, every step was a struggle. It's maybe a heavy, you know, cherubic, very cute, adorable child, but she was heavy. And then I could actually relieve my, my pain by putting her down. I have to wake her up and make her walk. But then I love her too much. And I felt as I carried her on one arm with my hands full of bags and Wendy's hands were full of bags, I felt like my arm was going numb. And that's not so bad. The next stage was the worst pins and needles, you know? And I, I had to keep it from trembling. And all the while so that I can hear her heavy breathing and I just love her so much. Then I realized that Isaiah 53 opens up. Isaiah 53 that says, it pleased the Lord to crush him. He opens up by saying, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? In other words, to whom shall God reveal his son? But here he calls his son, his arm. He says, do you love your daughter? I said, yes, so much that I would rather crush my arm than to wake her up. Then I realized that God would crush His Son because of His love for us. What a word we've received today. Subscribe to the Joseph Prince Ministries YouTube channel for daily updates. And don't forget to share it with someone you know. You never know who might need to be encouraged today.